we repeat what we see, right? So whatever patterns that you see in your relationship, I want you to consider if that's also something that you regularly experienced and saw from your parents' relationship. Where did that pattern come from? It could be previous relationships. It could be the relationships that your caretakers had. It came from somewhere. Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. As a marriage coach who's married with three kids, I know how much parenthood could change a marriage. If flirting, laughing, and having fun together feels like a thing of the past, then I'm here to teach you that marriage doesn't have to feel so hard with your parents, and your marriage can thrive even when you're in the season of raising kids. Whether you're in a good place in your marriage and you just want to continue growing together, or you're wondering if you even like your spouse anymore, this podcast has something for you. Join me here each week as we dive into what it takes to help your marriage grow and maybe even do a 180. You'll learn ways to handle conflict better, bring that spark back into your relationship, as well as learn how to improve other areas of your life from my lovely guest experts. Are you ready for the next stage of your life in marriage? Let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. As I'm sitting here right now, life is moving past. It is so crazy right now. We have moved out of our house. We have put it on market. It is now in contract. We are closing in a little over a week. We have just gotten back from a three-week vacation to Japan and Korea. And for those who love traveling, we went to Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, Busan, and Seoul. And now we are super jet lagged. And by the way, being jet lagged is one thing. And then being jet lagged with kids is a whole nother level. I don't recommend it. It's been brutal. (laughs) I mean, like the kids have been waking up at like three in the morning, right? Like as adults, we can look at the time and be like, oh, it's still dark. It is not time to get up. And we can lay there and try and go back to sleep. But they wake up at three in the morning. They're like, when's breakfast? I'm ready to go and full of energy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I am a mom with a newborn, (laughs) like that level tired. And yeah, that's been, that's been fun, but not really. (laughs) So that's all going on. And as we're in contract with selling our house, we are also house hunting so that we have somewhere to go to when we move to the East Coast. So lots of things are going on in tandem and I'm, I'm really not sure how I'm handling it. Things are getting done. I uh, definitely have had to scale back. It's been helpful to be now living with my parents because a lot of the chores that we normally have to do aren't necessarily on our plate anymore. They just let us handle the kids. And so we haven't been going to bed super late with all these other things that we're doing and taking care of kids. So that's kind of nice. But anyway, um, that's a quick little update on my life. I hope your life is going well and that things are a little less chaotic. Uh, Definitely don't recommend doing all of these things at the same time, but it is what it is. And um, for the most part, things are working out well. So hopefully by the next time you hear from me, I will say that I'm in contract for my next house. So anyway, today on this episode, I wanted to talk about how I recently, recently as in like this morning, (laughs) thought about all the different parallels when it comes to marriage and motherhood. Okay. Now, how often have you experienced a time where you realized that you are doing exactly what you said you would never do once you became a parent, right? I'm talking about those times where you catch yourself being just like your mom or just like your dad now that you're a parent. And you have that moment where you're like, oh my gosh, that is so cringy that I just did that, right? Especially when it's something that 
you hated that they did and you swore that you would never do that once you were a parent and you absolutely did not want to repeat that habit or way of parenting and then you catch yourself and you're like crap I totally just did what they did it's almost like you looked in the mirror and you saw your parents rather than yourself right things like saying because I said so or being super strict whatever it is that you catch yourself repeating and you're like gosh why did I just do that I remember how much I hated it but why did that come out of my mouth why was my approach that way right and especially with the whole like because I said so right I don't know about you, but for me, I really don't like being told what to do. And so as you can imagine, as a teenager, I'm like, what the hell kind of justification is that? I don't get it. Like, why are you trying to just squash it without having a conversation with me? Why are you trying to control me? I just hated it. Now, this is not about parenting, okay? Like I said, there are so many parallels. And this podcast, after all, is about marriage and motherhood and so I just love these moments where I'm like oh yeah that and this have so much in common again like how your experiences and the way you want to nurture your relationship with your child has so many things in common with the type of relationship that you can have with your spouse and how you can improve that relationship just drawing on similar approaches and thought processes right and i just find this super fascinating how you can apply a strategy or approach from motherhood to marriage but we don't think of that right sometimes you're good at one area but you're not so great at the other area right so maybe being a mom is a strength of yours but then when it comes to marriage it's like oh my god I don't know what I'm doing I just know this doesn't feel right I know that I want it to improve communication feels terrible it just seems like we're not on the same page or anytime we have an argument we just don't understand each other and we just leave the conversation feeling more hurt feeling more distant right and although this is called marriage and motherhood I actually recently learned that several of you are actually men your dads which is super cool i would never have thought that guys would listen to a podcast called this but alas here you are hi welcome thank you so much for listening and i'm so glad that you are finding value out of the show even though i'm mostly talking to moms but you know what all of this can apply to you as well right and i love it and again thank you so much for listening over the past few weeks, I don't know what's going on, but I've had several guys reach out to me and let me know that they love the show and that they really can resonate with the things that I'm sharing and how it's been helping them. Um, and it's like random, right? It's like people I knew from college or people I don't know at all. And they're just like finding me, whether their partner shared an episode with them to listen to and they kind of got hooked onto the show. And then all of a sudden they're reaching out and they're saying, hey, I want to work with you. I just think it's so cool how we can connect without ever even meeting in person just through social media or channels like this podcast. So I just thought that was so cool. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the guys that are listening to this. I love it. And I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad that you are finding this helpful. Either way, I'm here for it. Not here to discriminate. And I love that there are guys out there doing the work, willing to do the work, willing to think about how they're doing things in a different way rather than just saying, this is who I am and take it or leave it, right? Because at the end of the day, your relationship is made out of two people, right? Or at least a monogamous relationship. In a monogamous relationship, it's two people. Right. And so, of course, things are going to improve when both people are actively doing the work towards growing themselves, growing into the relationship and becoming more aware and reflecting. Of course, that's going to help the relationship heal and grow and get better that much faster than just one person doing it. So bravo to you. My hat's off to you. Like standing ovation. I love it. Keep doing it. OK, because in the end. 
it's going to work out better for you, right? So anyway, like I was saying earlier, we probably have had a lot of those moments where we're cringing because we recognize that we just did something that our parents did and we are slowly becoming our parents, kind of, right? I'm sure you can notice times where you're like, oh, this is how we're different. But there's also those moments where you're like, oh, we are very much alike, more than I thought we would be. <laughs> but now that I'm a parent, I totally get why you did the things you did, right? But the thing is that when we recognize those moments where we're like, oh, cringe, I just did something that I said I would never do, that I don't want to do, and I'm totally acting like a parent of mine, that's actually our chance, our opportunity to change how we're going to handle it going forward. So even in the moment, even though it's all said and done, we could treat it as a reflective moment, like a timeout. Right? Timeouts aren't just for kids. You can give yourself a timeout. Actually, it's one of the most powerful things you can do to improve the odds of conversations going better, especially when you are feeling super triggered and upset and emotional. Anyway, in those moments when you catch yourself, whether it's after, during, before, right? These are all chances for you, invitations for you to fix things. Okay? When you notice it, when you have that like light bulb go off, that aha moment, you have two options. You can say, oh, I'm totally being like them. And then you're like, okay, carrying on. Or you can be like, oh, I'm totally being like that. I am totally being like that. You can tell yourself that you're going to hit rewind and do a do-over, right? Kind of like how when you teach your kids and you notice that they did something, you're like, mm, okay, we're going to need to modify that behavior going forward because that's not going to be well received or that's not nice, whatever, right? For my husband and I, whenever our kids do something, for example, let's say your kid is like, they want water and they're like, get me water, right? Obviously, no one's going to respond well to that. And it's our job to teach them how they can get what they need, <laughs> right? Uh, a better way, a more effective way of communicating their needs in a way that will enhance their chances of getting that need met. So we would be like, okay, can you try that again? <laughs> right? We will look at them and say, I hear you want water. Can you try that again? And, you know, they now know to say, can I have some water, please? Right? But those times where they don't know what to say, we will actually model it for them so that we can give them an opportunity to practice and be like, okay, now your turn. So then they can say it, right? Or like, for example, if they are struggling and they feel really annoyed by one of their siblings' behaviors, instead of shouting and yelling and grunting and, you know, starting to use their body to shut them up, we'll be like, okay. Can you say that you don't feel like talking right now? Can you ask for some space? Can you ask for quiet instead of whatever aggressive way that their anger is presenting itself as, right? We can do the same thing for ourselves. And this is exactly how we grow and break the cycle, okay? Any cycle that you notice keeps recurring in your relationship that you want to change, just like how we are helping our kids grow into kind human beings who care about the person they're talking to, right? Because a huge part of communication is actually being aware of how your message is being received. How is it coming off? Caring more about the relationship rather than proving your point, right? In order for communication to actually be successful, whatever you're saying needs to be understood. Okay. And what I mean by that isn't push your point, right? Make them understand. No. What I mean is both people need to feel understood. I'm not saying come in like a dictator and like, this is what's going on. I'm going to, you know, rip you a new one until you understand exactly what you did wrong. No. That is counterproductive 
and harmful for the relationship. And also, I have done that in the past. It's not effective. Okay. So in order for communication to be successful, both people need to feel understood. Right. I'm sure you understand the difference of like when you're in a conversation with someone and you feel seen and you feel understood versus someone who's just like there just to say what they need to say. And otherwise their ears are just closed off to what you have to say, unless you're in agreement with them. Right. Like, that is not what I mean at all. Okay. When we do that, we're not really doing anything to increase the motivation for them to understand us, for them to try to understand us, right? And instead it just comes off as aggressive or rude or mean or passive aggressive or demeaning or condescending, right? Like you just can name all the negative ways that you've experienced someone or all the negative ways that other people may have experienced you. We don't want that, right? Little to no motivation will be created out of that scenario. Okay. So we get to change how we show up so that we can increase the likelihood of communication of our message and the intent and the desires and the goals that we have and we're trying to share to be received better for there to be collaboration happening rather than competition. Okay. I want you to think about the way you're teaching your kids. You can teach yourself that way as well. The only difference is that you may find it harder in your marriage to apply that same approach because it's you that needs to change. Okay. Change is hard. And as we get older, we get set in our ways and we get more stubborn, right? But just like when we teach our kids something, we have to constantly remind them, right? It's like we're a broken record. Like how many times? Well, I have to say this for you to get it. Is it the hundredth time? Is it the two hundredth time? Right? Because they're doing, just like you, what they know and what they're used to. So same thing for us. Those cringe moments where you catch yourself being like your parents, you're probably having those same kind of moments in the interactions with your partner, right? Maybe you're not paying too much attention to it because you're more set in your ways. Like I said, when it comes to the patterns that you develop in your relationship, because it's a relationship with another adult rather than with your kids. With your kids, I feel like you might give them a little bit more leeway and grace because they're brand new. <laughs> You're there to guide them and you might see them as more innocent and more good intent. And you see yourself as someone who is responsible for shaping and guiding and developing them. So you see, but you see yourself and you're like, no, you are a grown ass adult. All bets are off. You should know better. You should be more like me. And I'm going to let you experience my full wrath when I feel emotional, when I feel upset, rather than reeling it in and trying to manage my emotions in a healthier, more effective way. In a healthier way and express them more effectively. We just don't do that, right? And we repeat what we see, right? So like whatever patterns that you see in your relationship, I want you to consider if that's also something that you regularly experienced and saw from your parents' relationship. Where did that pattern come from, right? It could be previous relationships. It could be the relationships that caretakers had. It came from somewhere, right? So what you know and practice in your relationship with your child where you really try and like control your emotions and show up more calmly and more maturely right you might just throw all that out the window and be like you know what i'm pissed husband i'm going to say whatever the hell i feel like saying no filter. I don't care if it makes you feel bad because what you did made me feel bad and I want you to feel my pain, right? And even if you're like, I don't have that narration going on in my head, that might be going on 
subconsciously and you can verify that with taking a look at what your patterns actually are when you're triggered okay take a look at them like oh, are this helpful or are, do these things make things worse okay if it's the latter then you're totally doing this consciously now if you want your relationship to grow and there are things going on in your relationship that you don't love and you recognize that you have a partner which if you don't recognize that um, spoiler alert, you absolutely do have a part in it, okay? Even if it seems like they're in the wrong, you are still participating in the interaction. You are either helping things to escalate or you are escalating things, okay? So it doesn't matter what's happening, doesn't matter who's more wrong, you have a part in it somehow, some way, okay? And the sooner you learn that, the sooner your relationship will improve. Just FYI. Okay. I would say don't ask me how I know, but I actually want you to ask me how I know. <laughs> because I sucked at relationships before and I have done a lot of personal work and relational work to get to, to the place that I'm in right now. I'm not saying I'm perfect. There's definitely times where I have to catch myself and reel it in and apologize and whatever. But now when I'm triggered and I find myself doing something that is sabotaging the relationship, I can recover a lot faster and use that opportunity to grow our relationship to the next level. And so definitely ask me how I know. <laughs> anyway, it is our jobs as individuals to recognize the patterns that we are falling into that are hurting our relationships, right? The ones that are developed earlier in our relationship or from previous relationships or like I said ones that you observe from your caretakers your parents right it all comes from somewhere and we as adults who haven't had any guidance on how to have healthy relationships what we end up doing is every time we do that habit we do that response that learned response we are strengthening those patterns because we're like, this is how we are. Take it or leave it. And the more we practice those habits, whether they're negative or positive, it goes both ways. They just get more and more set in their ways. But this is not terrible news. This is great news. That doesn't mean that you can't change and that you can't grow. That doesn't mean things can't improve just because you do these things. Okay. You are not screwed up. You are just a byproduct of your environment. And now that you're an adult, I want you to be like, oh, I'm responsible for myself right now. I actually have the power to change things. I can recognize where I'm coming from and decide where I'm going from now on, right? So don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't go because you can 100% change. So the only thing is, if you want to grow, you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable, which can be hard for some people, for a lot of people, right? Like if you're coming from a culture where mental health and emotions aren't something that are regularly discussed, like you're probably like laughing or scoffing at the thought of that, then I get it, right? Vulnerability, what's that? That's for the weak. But what I'm telling you from experience is that vulnerability is what breaks that ceiling for your relationship and lets it expand and it gets to become its own thing. It gets to become more fulfilling and more of everything that you want out of it, okay? Even if it's just with yourself in the beginning that you're being vulnerable because you're not ready to share and speak these things out loud because I get how scary that can be and how it almost might feel like your body won't let you, it still helps for you to be vulnerable with yourself, to recognize and to own and to notice that you fucked it, right? There's power to saying that to yourself, like, oh, I fucked up in this moment, right? And be able to really see things more objectively and decide what you're going to do from there on. Instead of sitting in this place where I used to be, like, oh, I'm pissed. You fucked up. It's your fault. And all the fingers are pointed outside of me. I never once pointed the finger at myself. And all that led to were repeated cycles that were negative. Okay. Like 
encountering the same type of dynamic in every single relationship that I was in until I was willing to be vulnerable with myself and be like, ooh, let's look at myself in the mirror here. Is there something I can actually do better? And the answer is always yes. And so after that point on, things just got like crazy better. The kind of relationship that I was able to foster after that point, like I would have never thought I would be in that kind of relationship ever. So anyway, I'm hoping that gives you some help. So I did this whole, I'm going to blame everyone. I'm not going to take responsibility. And that was 0% helpful. I would say negative percent helpful because it actually took away, right? It made things worse. Leaning on justification about why they shouldn't have done what they did. Like those moments where your mind is racing and saying, well, if they didn't do this, then I wouldn't have got so angry and started yelling or getting passive aggressive or shut down or whatever it is that you end up doing, right? Those immediate justifications and rationales are understandable. And when you're doing the work, they might still come up because, hello, our brain is trying to protect us. But to notice, whenever you enter that kind of programming, because it's basically what it is, right? Whenever something's happening, aka trigger, you end up activating this program and like following this protocol, right? Imagine, we well, probably don't need to imagine because you do this every day, but like when you're on your phone and a notification gets pushed, right? And it says, hey, you have an email. So what do you do? You probably look at it, right? You read it. That notification is your trigger. So when you get that trigger, what you do is you open up the app and then you view it, right? Your emotions are kind of the same way. When your emotions are triggered, you do a certain action after that. So what I'm saying is if you want your relationship to improve, then you have to recognize what that pattern is. What is your go-to pattern, your habit, your action, your response, your reaction, whatever you want to call it? What is it? What do you do when you are triggered, right? When your spouse does something that puts you over the edge and you get upset or frustrated or annoyed, and just for fun, we have a lot of them. It's not just one, right? Because we will always have something we can work on within ourselves. But when those are triggered, what are you doing about it? Are you letting it play out every single time the same way, right? When he does this, I do this. Or another option is when you get triggered, hone in on it. Like, okay, I'm going to be more observant next time. I'm going to notice because this happened every single time that they do this. And over time, you're going to be able to catch yourself sooner and sooner. So maybe in the beginning, you're going to catch yourself after it's all done, right? And things are settled. And maybe you're like, crap, I did it again. But it's not too late. Not at all. You can always go back and apologize for your reaction. That in itself is building awareness, taking responsibility, building trust, showing and extending love and care. And you're saying like, hey, this relationship matters to me. I'm willing to be vulnerable and courageous and, and own my misstep. And in that reflection process and in that expression to your partner, you get to build intimacy. Okay. The key though is to notice when it happens when you are triggered. That's like that fork in the road where you're like, okay, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? You have choices when you are more aware of what the hell is going on inside you. Not in your spouse, but in you. Because who do you have control over? I know sometimes we like to think we have control over our spouse. We can definitely influence them. But at the end of the day, who do you have control over? You. That's it. Right? Nobody else. Not even your kids. I will say that you're not going to be on your A game 100% of the time. Okay? So just because you're like, okay, from now on, I'm going to do this instead. That doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be perfect every single time. A, we are human. So by just that fact alone, we are not perfect. Okay? We are flawed. So. Even if you find yourself messing up and regressing into your old behaviors and pulling up that old programming again, it does not mean that you are setting back. It does not mean you took 
steps backwards. Growth is not linear, okay? It's not a straight line. It's not like, okay, I take one step forward and I keep going forward, right? Sometimes we're going to be on the ball and so on top of our game and feel so proud that we responded in the way that we wanted to respond. And it's helping the relationship and we recognize our own growth. But there's going to be times where we're tired, we're hungry, we're at our wit's end because maybe you're kid is like super needy that day or super whiny or you know things are just chaotic it's stressful maybe you're <laughs> traveling internationally while selling your house and buying a <laughs> who does that <laughs> who's crazy enough to do that me barely but there's gonna be times where you are not at your fullest capacity where you don't have the bandwidth to handle something like that okay because that type of work requires high levels of energy and effort because growth takes work. And we are not always available to do that work, right? It's not like we have arguments scheduled in our calendar. I hope you don't, right? It's not like you know when these things are going to happen. Although if you have a conversation scheduled, then maybe you can anticipate that and make sure that you are building yourself up to be able to handle perhaps the conversation that gets escalated so that you have the capacity to de-escalate it instead of contribute to it and add fuel to the fire, right? It takes a lot. And we need to be in a good place for us to be able to do this growth work often. Which is why self care is so damn important, right? Getting your life how you need it to be so you have the capacity to actually put in the work rather than just be in survival mode and super reactionary, like snapping at people and not listening because you are just like done, right? Because your tolerance is so low, lower than normal, and you are not receptive at all. But here's the thing. The more we are able to consciously choose to do what we want to do versus what we're used to doing, the more we're actually reprogramming ourselves to respond automatically in that better, different, more mature, more effective way that we want to. So don't be like, oh, I did great this time, but I didn't do it this time. This is just how I am. I am doomed. No. Okay. Let that mess up, let that mistake be what it is. Reflect on it, take responsibility for it, make amends, even if it's after the fact, because you can use it as an opportunity to learn about how you want to be instead, how you're going to handle it differently instead, what steps you're going to do to fix that, and basically treating it like the juiciest orange where the juice is the lessons and the wisdom that you can take out of it and just squeezing it for all that it's got, right? All the wisdom that you can gain from that experience. Don't let it deter you from continuing on just because you feel like you went back to square one. It's not actually going back to square one when you feel like you're regressing, right? Think of it as learning how to shoot a three point. As you refine your shot, you're going to make some and you're going to miss some. But with more practice, you'll find that you're going to make more than you miss because you are refining your technique. You're trying different things and you can learn a lot from the times that you miss. So give yourself grace, but also make use out of those lessons. Okay. So this is how we change the trajectory of relationships. We take a look at the patterns, we take a look at what's going on, and we choose which direction we're going to go in. And we give ourselves grace as we grow through this. Okay? So, if you want to make your marriage better, I highly recommend going back to doing the work by taking a look at those patterns that you have, how you're showing up. In breaking those cycles. Okay. And if you want help with this, this is what I specialize in. This is what I love helping people with because it has been so liberating and empowering to be able to do this for myself. Again, this is not like a 100% foolproof. Obviously, like I said, we're human. Sometimes we're going to be on it, sometimes we're not. But I want you to actually know how to do this so that you can be on it way more often than off your game. 
Okay. And that's all I have for you for this episode. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are by sending me a message. And of course, if you love this show, please leave a review. That helps the show so much. And I would love to have this show reach more people and help more people just like you. All right. Well, reach out if you want support. Otherwise, I'll catch you back here on the next episode. Bye. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, please send me a message over on Instagram at Michelle Perta Coaching to let me know what you loved most about it. Hearing from my listeners is my absolute favorite. And if you've been loving this podcast, please leave a rating and review. This will help people like you find the show and get the help they need. Catch you here on the next episode. Bye.